What's up guys, I'm Ira Rochelle and this is Too Deep. The Tower of Babel is one of those stories that most Christians know by heart. Nevertheless, let's read it real quick. Genesis chapter 11 verse 1 through 9. Now the whole earth had one language and the same word, and as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. Now a few things I want to point out to you. First, the people desire to build a tower with its top in the heavens. This isn't just any type of tower. This isn't just a very tall tower either because why would God come down to stop them from completing all of their plans if it was? In fact, this plan would be silly to try to attempt unless the Tower of Babel was more than just a very tall tower. Because how would it make it through the firmament vault or expanse or whatever you'd like to call it? The Genesis chapter 1 verse 6 through 8 and verses 14 through 18 explain is between the third heaven where God abides and the earth. The people weren't trying to literally make a tower tall enough to have its top in the heavens. No, they were trying to build a device that either teleported them into heaven or opened the doors, windows, or gates of heaven. Okay, now I know what many of you might be thinking, but Hear me out. The Bible tells us accounts of teleportation. In fact, it tells us more than one account of teleportation devices. For more on teleportation and teleportation devices, check out our videos, Does the Bible Support Teleportation and Teleportation Devices in the Bible, both of which are under our Too Deep category or playlist. Next, I want you to notice that the people left off building the city. It never mentions that they left off building the tower. It says that God came down to see the city and the tower, that that they had built in verse 5. But verse 8 says that they only stopped building the city. This insinuates that the people had completed the Tower of Babel. Now if this device had the possible capabilities of teleporting someone or something into heaven or opening the windows, doors, or gates of heaven, what happened to it? What if Babel is our basis for the myth of Atlantis? Atlantis was supposedly an extremely advanced city that sank to the bottom of the ocean. Now, before you click away or call me an idiot like some of you love to do, gotta love those comments, let's lay a little bit more foundation. Solomon, the wisest natural born man to ever live, said that there is nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9 says, what has been is what will be and what has been done is what will be done. And there's nothing new under the sun. Now I want to direct your attention to some end time biblical prophecies. Revelation chapter 6 verse 14 says, The sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. We see the same event repeated again in Revelation chapter 16 verse 20. And every island fled away, and no mountains were to be found. If there was nothing new under the sun from the days of King Solomon, then there is definitely nothing new under the sun in the future. Therefore, if every island will be removed from its place after the sky vanished like a scroll that's rolled up, then there had to have been at least one island that vanished. What if that island was Babel? Now, in a previous video entitled, Does the Bible Support Pangea, which you can find under our Too Deep category or playlist, we explained that at the Tower of Babel, the people's tongues or languages were divided, but at the time of Peleg, the earth itself was physically divided according to Genesis chapter 10 verse 25. Could it be that at that same time that God was physically splitting up Pangea, God actually sank the city of Babel and its tower so that they couldn't get to it again. While you all ponder these things, let's sum it all up real quick. 
Atlantis is a myth of an extremely advanced city being lost to the world by sinking to the bottom of the ocean. Could this myth be based on the true account of the city of Babel? Solomon explains that there's nothing new under the sun in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9, and both Revelation 6 verse 14 and Revelation 16 verse 20 prophesy that every island will be removed from its place. The city of Babel contained a tower whose top reached into the heavens. This wasn't a very large tower, but a teleportation device that had the potential to open the doors, windows, or gates of heaven for someone or something to enter and exit heaven of their own accord. Therefore, could it be that Atlantis was the distorted fable of the true account of the city of Babel being removed? I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.